What's up, y'all? Y'all are listening to Living Corporate's flagship podcast. If you didn't know, Living Corporate helps organizations build employee engagement and market trust through data analytics and data transformation, our e-learning platform, and brand marketing storytelling. We're so excited for you to be here today. The conversation you're about to hear is going to connect the dots between employee experience and go-to-market effectiveness. If you're not ready, get ready. Here we go. W. Kamal Bell, man, I don't know. Like the laundry list is long. The resume is long. I'm going to say satirist because I don't say satirist a lot. Satirist. Okay. Speak, speaker, author, um, media personality, um, lo- passionate about local community, documentarian. Welcome back to Living Corporate, man. How you doing? All right. I, you know, I got a long list of jobs because I got a long list of children. So <laughs> that's how it works. Man, look, you know, the last time we were here, you know, we were talking about your book, Do the Work. And for those that was some years ago, um, I just and it's funny how time flies. But like for those who don't know, Do the Work was like this. It, it is a workbook of sorts uh, to really empower and help and support the enablement of DEI practitioners. And I remember even that conversation. You were like, look, Zach, for black folks and, you know, brown folks like this, some of this stuff is going to seem really simple, but like. This is really targeted a lot towards like white DEI practitioners. I, it contextualized a lot of language and just gave a lot of historical context to things. Super fire book. Um, since then, though, right? Like it's just again, it's just wild. Maybe not wild. It maybe it's kind of predictable. I'm not sure. Um, since then, we've seen what a lot of people are calling pushback, backlash, DEI being under attack. Uh, we've had folks on that have been uh, subject to lawsuits from Stephen Miller. Um, you know, like we've had, we've, we've seen a lot of things, um, push back any, uh, against any initiative that doesn't support or promote, um, folks that are not straight, white, male, uh, Christian. And so like, I'm curious what in this moment in your mind does the work look like right now? I mean, I, you know, it's funny cause when me and my co-author Kate Schatz are writing the book, the publisher was like, man, I wish the book could come out right now. And we're like, it's okay. Racism is not going away anytime soon. So we are certainly in a moment where I would say the thing that is sort of very indicative to me of what the moment is, my 80-year-old dad is like, this is bad. (laughs) My 80-year-old dad from Alabama is like, this is bad. So he's seen some bad. He's, he's, He's born and raised and still lives in Alabama. And, but he's also spent a lot of time working in corporate America. And he's seeing like a lot of programs that he was like, literally was one of the people who started these programs or advocated for these DIY programs, DEI, DIY, you got to do it yourself, Uh, (laughs) DEI programs. Like he was one of the first people to say, I think we need to to create programs to promote diversity before there was an acronym for it, before there was a thing for it. It was just called diversity. Yeah. He's seeing in his state and in corporate America, these programs be canceled or divested from. And so this is the moment where really, the rubber heat meets the road, the, the rubber meets the road of like, are we who we say we are? So for me, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm in show business. I'm trying to be, you know, a superstar. I want to be the next Kevin Hart, <laughs> you know, like all those things uh, or, or the next Jerry Seinfeld, you know, uh, but also I got to make sure that I'm still doing my part to make it easier on the people coming behind me. You know what I mean? And, and so a lot of the work that you said, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say cares about local issues is like work in my local community of like, I can't, I can't fix the federal government. <laughs> you know, that's not my job, yeah. but I think I can help Oakland. So I think that's a lot of it is like, really, we have a section of the book called know your lane. And it's about like, and this can, can help anybody, what, you know, no matter what your race is, what are the areas in your life where you can make an impact? So you don't always think when you're watching the news, Oh my God, it's so bad over there. Or when you're watching a tragedy go down in your city, that tragedy is bad. What are the things you can do in your house, in your block, in your neighborhood with your local politicians? And so that's what I'm doing right now is working with the local politicians here to make Oakland a more accessible place for everybody to film, but specifically black and Brown folks. You know, I remember we had talked about this, like the first time we had you on in relation to staying in your lane. And you talked about the fact you said, look, 
there are things that I can practically do. You talked about empowering and helping and hiring black folks, keeping like, mm -hmm. like reaching out, like just in your immediate vicinity. I mean, look, an example of this is coming on Living Corporate, local, like black independent media on a platform that is not, again, not not owned by or not under the umbrella of an NBC or Paramount or whatever the case Wait, is. Wait, what? I thought this was under a... Okay, I got to go. I, I got to go. Was, I got to go. This, <laughs> I thought Jeff Bezos owned this. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have gotten me here under suspicious circumstances. No. False pretenses. No. So, but it's, it's it's real talk, though. And it's like, you know, I and, and like, man, I just, I salute that. Like, there are, and I think that it's easy to kind of like, push against things and like these really large theoretical content themes or, or, or senses, but it's like, Hey, like there are things that ev all of us can do, especially those of us who might be a little bit more privileged, right? Like it's easy for, I think the common man to look at W Kamal Bell and be like, Oh man, he's like super, super way up there. And I'm not saying you're not, but it's like, yo, like we're all like, like from a class perspective, we're all like a couple degrees separate from each other. We can all, we can all help in our relative ways. I mean, again, Roy Wood Jr. is another great example of that. Now, yeah. um, you know, we haven't connected in a while. Like I said, it's been some years. Um, I'd love to get your perspective on the Biden administration and how you were feeling about Biden running. And then like your reaction to the news. He's like, hey, I'm not I'm not running again. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to take credit for it, but I do feel like I get like point zero 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 one percent credit for getting him to drop out. I'm not George Clooney. I didn't write an op ed to The New York Times. But I was certainly talking about the fact that, like, hey, this is, doesn't look like it's going as well as we as as he thought it was. You know I mean? After that debate, it was like, hey, everybody. And, you know, it's funny how in this country we don't have any problem telling people they're too young to do something. But we have a lot of problem telling people they're too old to do something. Yeah. And, you know, I, I live in California where we had a senator named Diane Feinstein who mm. uh, uh, <laughs> it was an open secret that she was not all the way there towards yeah. the last several years of her life. And, you know, we don't have a mechanism for like, it's funny because you talk about corporate. We don't have a mechanism in politics for saying it's time to go. But in corporate America, there's a, you turn yeah. 65, you out of there. You, you got to go CEO. Go. I'm still vital. And you got to go. Cause capitalism you, <laughs> says you got to hey, go. The, hey. the actuarial table says it's time to go. Right. No, the, yeah, your blood is not greasing these cogs fast enough anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so, and so like, you're absolutely right. Because I'm thinking about, you know, I worked for a, a huge uh, global consulting firm for some years, man. And, it was just, it was just no, hey, the mandatory reti uh, retirement age. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, you you talk to these older partners and it was like, it wasn't a debate. It was like, yeah, I know I'm being put out yeah. to pasture in 17 months. Right. Yep. yep but but yep. You're, you're absolutely right, man. Like it does in public service. In public service. Public, public so let's be clear. In public service. Because public service ain't pub service in the public like it was supposed to. Fact, I was going to say the irony is, is that. There's there's money come there's money coming in and out of in, in and out of that sector as well, but mm -hmm. yeah, because but to your point, man, you know, and maybe because I was raised in the church, like I I've, I've been around older people my whole yeah. life, mm -hmm. like I'm used to seeing oh your shutter speed is <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that just like that you just sort of sneak the car keys away. I can't yeah. find my car keys, man. I wonder what happened to him. Anyway, just go sit down in that easy chair. Yeah, it's okay. We'll put your but, stories on. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's like hey, you're not, you're not, you're not. It's not rotating. It's not spinning in the same. Not turning over. No, no, you're not. You're just place. idling. You're just idling. You're not actually making. You're not moving anywhere. And so you know, and I to that point, man. I mean, I was talking to my mom about it. It's like I think it's wild that we don't have a. So it's like, look, I'm not. I had really because ageism works both ways, right? I don't believe there are things that you can be too young for things you'd be too old for. That doesn't mean that we're looking at you less than I'm not saying that someone of Biden's age does not have value in like this larger system. That's that's, that's yeah. That's a different question. Yes. We all have value. My mom is 87 years old. She has a lot of value. And to be quite honest, she's way more on the ball than Biden at yes. 87. Yes. And I'll say this, she can be present for about 45 minutes a day. Because that's about all she's got patience for. And if she gets hungry, maybe it's a half hour. Like, it's just not, she's just not capable of paying that level of attention. And she shouldn't have to. And luckily right. her son 
is is successful enough that I don't have NBA draft money, but I do have one bedroom apartment in Oakland money. So you know, hey, so and Oakland yeah. is not cheap. So, but no, it's not and, cheap. It's not cheap. And so, and here to like to that point, man, I think there's also just like this huge chasm between 21 and like 80 something. Like we yeah, could yeah. do, we could do some, so. Okay, so we agree. I, I'm, I'm of the same mind, and I'm gonna share something on on this pod is. I peeped some early when he was in like when he was running in 2020. Yeah. He was talking and like yeah. W people weren't talking about it, but I'm I but I peeped it. He was talking yeah. and he had to adjust. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, and I yeah. and I was like and I said, "Man, like now that's not necessarily a telltale sign, but I was like, yeah. Hey, man, like yeah. What's what's going on? Now, yeah. how how did you feel though? All that aside, like how did you feel when you saw the news? Hey, I'm coming. Like mm-hmm. immediate reaction to Kamala coming out and saying I'm running for president. Like, what was your immediate reaction there? Well, it's funny because I and I t- and I tweeted about this because I don't say X. You can't make me say X. No. Nah. Uh, but uh, I was on a flight heading to D.C. for nothing to do with anything to do with any of this. Just to be clear, yeah. I was, but I was heading there for work. And as the as the as the flight attendant, it's like, please turn off your phones. It goes Biden dropped out, and I was like, ah. <laughs> I would love to turn off my phone, but I'm very important and I need to keep up on this new story. <laughs> and you may not recognize me, but I'm, people are going to want me to chime in on this. So <laughs> so he dropped out. And then by the time we like climbed up, you know, it was about 20 minutes between the time he dropped out. So when he dropped out, first of all, I was just like, yay. And not even anti-Biden, just like for the first time in my memory, Democrats were actually trying something. Yes, like they were not just going to be the, Democrats are always like I always say Democrats are like like r- Democrats rent the car, get all the insurance and then drive it in the slow lane the whole time they hit rent the car. Yeah. Republicans don't get the insurance and they drive it like they stole it. They you know what I mean? So they take it to a roller derby. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And leave it there and don't fill up the gas. And and so I just felt like at least they were, I don't know how this is going to work out. And at that point, for like 20 minutes, we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I was just happy that something was being tried. And then when he sort of like 20 minutes later was like, also, it's it's Kamala. It just felt like it happened so much smoother than I think any of us were prepared for. Because I know apparently even like Nancy Pelosi and Obama wanted like a brokered convention where you go to the where. And that would have been fun. Thunderdome, the, you know, Democratic th- Thunderdome. But it's also probably not the smart play politically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, so by the time it was Kamala, there's this whole funny thing that happens because I live in Oakland. And we've now discovered that Kamala's a daughter of Oakland, even though she spent most of her time out here in Berkeley. Uh, (laughs) I don't know if you've noticed this, but we've talked about a lot in the Bay Area. The New York Times did a story where they said Berkeley, because she lived in Berkeley as a kid. Like she did not live. She was like out here, you know, you're born where the hospital is, but that doesn't mean that's where you grow up. So, you know, in Berkeley and Oakland are right They're right on top of each other. So she was born in Oakland at the Oakland Hospital. But she grew up, spent all of her time growing up in Berkeley it, that she was out here. And, and she lived in Oakland at different points, but she's definitely a Berkeley kid. And, uh, and and the New York Times found out that Berkeley residents understood that Kamala was going to have to not claim she was from Berkeley. Because basically Kamala had done the math of like, which sounds worse, black from Oakland or communist Marxist from Berkeley? <laughs> they were going to go with uh, communist Marxist from Berkeley sounds worse. So I'm going to go with I'm black from Oakland. <laughs> Which is crazy math that yeah. black works out better for once. You know? Yeah, it's it's yeah, crazy in the optics. It, in the op, no, it's a hundred percent. And I mean, I didn't know. And like, look, I, I didn't even know because I don't know how much studying and like research I've done of Kamala Harris for real. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know like the backstory in her dad and like oh, yeah, his professorship yeah. and like the work that he had done and like yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, he's a real one. Like he's not, yeah. he's not he's with none a- of this. At all, he's such a real one. He's not even doing interviews. He's right. Like, <laughs> I'm, he's like, I'm not even available. Like, yeah, not even like, <laughs> like that last run. That after yeah. after he made that last statement, he was like, he's like, I'm not participating in this no more. And he yeah. has not. Nope. Nope. Didn't show. Maybe he was at the convention, like the Phantom of the Opera, but he certainly was not there uh, in the selfies and in the photos. He was not trying. You know, not both, there. Neither him nor Beyonce showed up, as far as I can tell. Bro, that Beyonce, that Beyonce non look was crazy. We're gonna talk about the DNC in a minute, though. Now. Now, look, let, I, I, I want to also get your perspective, you know, like, did you experience the high, like, to your, you're kind of alluding to it in terms of, like, where she's saying, where Kamala claims she was from. Did you, ex, did you engage in the high of first black woman, 
presidential nominee, black girl magic. Uh, like, did you like, did you like, are, are you, did you get caught up in that excitement at all? Did you allow for yourself for that at all? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Yes. On some level, I think it's, I think people think you have to be one or the other, but mm-hmm. I think, I, I think we're all capable of like, that's great, but it's not perfect. There's so much more work to do because she's not exactly politically aligned with me the way I would like her to be. But I have three mixed race black daughters who this is going to mean something to because optics and identity politics do matter. Also, we need to figure out this whole Palestine situation, and I don't know which side she's on. Hey, so you know, like it's just so yes, but not in a way that distracts me from like the all the other issues. But with my daughters sitting there watching the DNC. And my yeah. nine-year-old, my 13-year-old actually watched a lot of it. My nine-year-old watched a lot of it. My 13-year-old watched the comma part. And to see their reaction to seeing this person who's from where they live, Oakland and Berkeley, and who they had heard of before, and, you know, they know because she's her name goes well. He's big out here. And to see her potentially being the next president, that's a big deal in the last pre- – when it was when they lived during the Trump era, you know. And yeah. we know as kids, representation means a lot. Now, as adults, representation doesn't – always mean as much because you're just your skin folk or not always your kin folk yeah. but i can be of two minds about like yes i get why this is exciting yes i get why that zoom call with all those black women happened and why that means something i hope my big hope is that i hope kamala realizes more than even obama you're being propelled you're not like launching yourself you know what i mean yeah. and i don't mean that in any, but like i think about it in superhero analogies like Obama's like Batman where every day he trained to be president from the time he was like a little, he like, you know, like a, like a, I don't know, a president flew through his window and he's like, I gotta be a president. And whereas, whereas Kamala was like bit by a radioactive good politician. <laughs> you know what mm. I mean? like she, it's like, she's been like injected with like some sort of like power that she's had that she didn't have before. She, yeah. she didn't have it until Joe Biden endorsed her. It's like, she got, yeah. that was like the super soldier serum. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like her speech at the Dem convention was her best speech she's ever given by far. And there's not a number two, I don't think, you know what I mean? There's no, it's like, that was like the bar that she set for her new, for her new self. Whereas Obama knocks those off. Like it's no big deal. Like yeah, he, kind of, he can go up there with not know what's the topic. Never mind, I'll figure no it notes. out. You know what I mean? No, no, no notes. And so I think that Kamala is being propelled by all this energy. And what I hope and pray is that if she gets there, cause it's still, if that she remembers these people put you there. You have to represent for them. Now, whether or not you politically, you have to understand who put you there and why. Yeah, and and not necessarily that you did it yourself. You know what I mean? Like nobody does it themselves. But you know what I'm saying? I know what you mean. And, and you know what? And you know to your point about like being like position, right? So like in perfect example, I think about like when my man got the glow at the end. He yes, 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 yes. Like he had that. Yes. Like when I realized that she the, at that DNC. Mm-hmm. The, my moment of oh she got the glow was when she uh, was that, up if there. they had played that song at the end <laughs> like me and you would have been excited <laughs> crazy. i would have went crazy yeah. Yeah, yeah i realized she had that glow was when she got up there and said we're gonna have the most <laughs> lethal military in the world and people went crazy like they you would have thought she said I don't know something. Everybody gets everybody gets free a free turkey this Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, they, oh, they're gonna put they they're putting yeah. to your point. They're put they are pushing you, mm-hmm. like they the collective they yeah. this coalition of 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 various peoples. Yeah. They yeah. want you in this seat, right? Yes. Yeah, and so like yeah. so like to that end, like I, I, before I get to the next thing, I'm curious. Like, what do you think about all these? So my position on all these discussions about her her race and identity are are, are, are pretty much distractions, right? Like, mm-hmm. is she black? Is she not? There's videos of her talking about how she cooks greens. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like, and, and and maybe because like w, like look, I I'm privileged in having like a really like diverse set of like of friends across the diaspora. My mm-hmm. my philosophy is that like, hey, look, man, you're black, like. Like whether you're were born in this country or you're from the islands or some country in Africa, like you are part of this larger community. Yes, there's cultural nuances there, but like you're black. Like, do you think there's more to this conversation than just like petty distraction? Look, I'm always good for a a, a good uh, esoteric how many angels can dance on the head of a pen conversation if we want to have it, and we certainly in the diaspora we can have that conversation. Yeah, but I can even I can even accept the fact that. She's not African American. She's black, or she, she's a, she's she's half. She's not half. She's not half African American, 
half South Asian. She's half, half Jamaican American, half South Asian. So I will accept we can we can define we can break it down into all those different things. I'm not, but none of that distracts from the idea of like. If that if that stops you from voting, if that's the issue that stops you from voting for her, because I, I I keep saying this, there's lots of reasons to be critical of, of her record and what she's. But if that's the one, I think you're a little, I think you're messed up. I'm not saying you can't have the conversation, but I just think, and also as a parent who has two has three daughters who are who I'm like every day I'm like waking them up to young, gifted, and black. I don't have any space for like, you know, this this country has said if you if you got a touch of the tar brush, brush then you're black. So that's what the rule is, right? <laughs> like, that's right. The one drop. I'm not raising white girls. I'm raising black girls who are mixed race and happen, and that mixed is white. They're not white girls. You know what I mean? So I don't have any. I, I will engage in the discussion with you, but I also have low tolerance for like the attacks because it's just like I don't. I'm not going to take that for my. You're not going to do that to my kids. So I don't have. Right. So it's like we're just going to. But again, if you want to criticize her record, I can find you plenty of people in the 510 area code who have who are probably not going to vote for her, despite the fact she's a daughter of Oakland, because they don't like her record and, yeah. and not the pretend record that people talk about, but her right. actual record. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't have. You know, again, I I don't have any. I like to look at this. I'm a black man married to a, a, a white woman. I get that there's some circles of blackness I can't walk into because of that. Like I get that there's like, hey, what's up, my five percenters? Like I get that you, you, you're not you're not you're not going to be on a parent. You're not going to be like hosting an event with Doctor Umar anytime soon. No, 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 no. I, and I and that's okay. That's fine. You know, whatever. So I understand that, but you're not going to tell me that I'm less black because I married a white. Like I don't have time for that discussion. Right. You know. So you know, you can you can say I'm not allowed in over there. Great. I, have at it. Good for you. But and I get that why I I totally understand why you wouldn't want me in that. Fine, but I'm not going to take uh, criticism unless you're also going to like help buy groceries and pick my kids up after school. Like I don't have you, I don't have space for you to criticize my life unless you also want to like uh, s- uh, support my finances. Hey man, I, hey man, and it's you know I, it, what I think is interesting. Like there's there's more nuanced discussions to have, right? Like to your yeah. point about record or even like identity and culture, right? It's like mm-hmm. as I've talked to folks, and I've said, you know, it's interesting. Because people say she's black, she graduated from Howard and pledged AK undergrad, and it's like, and I'm like, well, first of all, I think she's again everything we already said is like I'm not questioning nobody's blackness like that. Mm-hmm. What I think it is an interesting conversation is like, hey, like if anything, I think Kamala represents like the black elite in like a really unique way. Like, yes, like yeah. that yeah. to me, that's a much more interesting discussion. She grew up in yes. Berkeley, like, like she, like she has, she has, she has uh, a parent who was who was and is a tenured professor at a at a notable one of the most leading institutions in the world she graduated she graduated from black harvard like from like black ivy league and also pledged in a, in a like that is to me a much more like again interesting perhaps for some folks uncomfortable conversation yeah. but but at least it's like grounded in something i don't know reasonable yeah i mean i think you could have a discussion that cuz if she becomes president there's a discussion to be had about why is it that America's first two black presidents aren't are the kids of black immigrants? You know what I mean? Or black, right. you know what I mean? Or black, right. like, why is that? Like, that's, that's a great, cause I think there is something to be said about that. Like, that's interesting that like, that the, that when we decide that it's time for a black person, it's not a black person. And I'm not necessarily a part of this crew, but can trace their legacy to slavery. You know what I mean? To enslavement. So I think that there, there's certainly a PhD thesis in that if she's elected president. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, ask uh, Amadou Diallo about what the police thought about, well, you're an immigrant, you're an, uh, you're an immigrant, so you're not an African-American, so we're not going to brutalize you. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, again, I, I will have all the reparations discussions about who gets what when they start passing out reparations and why it's more important. I, I'll have all those discussions. But again, if it's, if it's about dividing us instead of like about equity and fairness, I don't have time for it. I love it. Now, you know, we kind of already we're talking about it a little bit already, but you know, coming down from like the high of the decision and Beyonce not showing up, no no shade to Beyonce. Uh, I was like, is she gonna pop out a balloon? But yo, the balloon's scared. And I was like, is she in a balloon? Like, she- <laughs> but W, if had she shown up, oh man, I I, I, yeah. I think the world would have cracked in half. So 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 you know, coming off the high, like we're still, at, I think we're still like a lot of folks. I I, I feel like I'm myself one of those people. Um, in a place again where so many people are turning up their noses to vote Democratic, like okay, I'm gonna do it, but like I don't really want to. Um, it, it we're in an interesting season because 
you, you talked already a little bit about about um, Israel Palestine. Look, I'm I'm 35, right? So I know there's been a ton of life and world that's happened before I got here. I hate it when like people in my generation act like the thing that's happening is the first thing that's just, it's ever happened. I know that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I think technology has given us like open view, like like up close and personal in ways that I never imagined seeing. Um, like just brutality um, and just up close and personal front row seats to a genocide. Um, and we're also seeing a candidate so far being unwilling to adjust course than the one that we're on. And so like, what would you say? I part, part of me would say to young people, but I mean, it's true. Like there's a lot of Gen Zers who are going to be voting for the first time in this election. Every time, everyone's election is the, for the first election uh, for somebody. But like, what would you say to folks across across the the block who are who are trying to navigate this moment as to what to do well so first of all i would say know what the system is so if the vote if it was just based on popular vote i'm pretty sure i, I would go to vegas and bet today that kamala's going to win the popular vote like but mm -hmm. that's not what the system is so then it becomes about where do you live <laughs> like what state do you live in so i live in california I'm not saying I'm voting for Mickey Mouse, but I can vote for Mickey Mouse, and it's not going to change whether or not Kamala Harris is the president. And I'm not, and that's not my way of saying. So I think your vote means something different depending upon where you are in the country. So, like for example, the uncommitted movement, a lot of those people are in Michigan, and they're like, "Hey, you you could lose this state by thousands of votes, not hundreds of thousands, by thousands of votes." You should probably come talk to us because we have a huge Arab and Muslim voting block here that you know. I, I saw that almost a million people voted for some version of uncommitted in the primaries. Yes. So yes. like, if, and that's a lot, it's a big number, but it's when you scatter it across the States, 11 Hillary lost Mich, uh, Wisconsin by 11,000 votes. So it's like, you're talking about like, so, so what I would say to young people is one, figure out wh like, where are you voting? And cause that will also affect what you need to do, what you need to do, take that information. And two, I almost sort of go like this, look, it, it I, I'm not going to argue with about the presidency. It's super important that you vote local because your local issues are about your community. So I would say if you're going to put any, if you're sort of reluctant, start to figure out what the local issues are in your community and and figure out where you want to vote on those. And while you're in there, pick a president or don't. I just sort of feel like I'm going to leave that up to you. But it, I do say, because I was a person who was younger was like, it doesn't matter who you vote for because it sounds cool to say. And also you're young and you don't know, but it sounds like you're a rebel. I'm not voting, you know, but, uh, and so I understand that thinking. I'm not condescending to it, but I, I'm encouraging everybody, hey, figure out what your local elections are because that's your school board, that's local taxes, that's the, that's the city council people or whoever, the aldermen if you're in Chicago. Those are the people. Find out who runs your neighborhood. Find out all these things. It could be anything that you go, wait, or about the money that's, out, lot of, uh, that's allocated to city services. Like, that's what you want to figure out. And while you're in there, Pick a president. Like since you're in, since you're already there, that's what I would do. I encourage people to vote. I just want you to register to vote, make a voting plan, and go vote. Once you do what you get in there, is between you and Jesus. Love it, man. Uh, look now, I I got to talk about, I got to talk about some of these jokes, okay? Because. I, you're funny. I, like, you're, you're a funny nigga, dog. I'll be laughing. I, well, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm starting to do stand-up again, but I sort of, when I don't do stand-up, it's just like, all I can do is tweet. <laughs> so like, Bro, I just... I be, I, I be laughing. I was like, dog. Like, and you know what? As, as a quick aside, real quick, like, there are certain stand-up com the comedians that, like, that, like, I've been like, man, I don't really think they're that funny, right? Like, oh, then, that's not, I don't think they're funny. Yeah. Yeah. But then I've gone to their shows and I'm busting out laughing and what I realize is, the, a very simple unlock for me is, was in that moment. Oh, these people are funny for a living. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, hey, they, I might find I find this clip funny, but there's a mm -hmm. high percentage chance that if I sit in front of this person for mm -hmm. ten minutes, they probably mm -hmm. gonna make me laugh for about six or seven of them. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. like, they, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it's just it's how you it's how you take care of your family. So back on these jokes, right? Like you've been making and poking good fun at JD Vance, and. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you some space to just do that because because we're gonna clip this up. We're clipping up the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, what, what is what what is up with this dude, man? Like, why is he he's so strange? What yeah. like what, what what would you attribute that to? I mean, I, so I think first of all, I think I take it personally because he did live out in the Bay Area for a while, and that's when he had that book come out, uh, "Hillbilly Elegy." That like you know, one of the and it happens every now and again. 
a white person writes a book where white people are like, oh, finally, someone is focused on us. <laughs> finally, somebody has spent time to explain what our struggles, you know what I mean? And finally, and it's also the elite white people going, I knew poor white people needed to, I needed to learn more about the poor whites. I'm not going to do anything about it, but I'm glad I read the book. <laughs> uh, so, he, you know, so he's a, it's a, it's, you know, it's like black like me, poor like me. Uh, and then to really know the story that he's been bankrolled by Peter Thiel, who's like a billionaire investor. One of those guys who's like trying to figure out how to live forever. Literally, I'm not making this up. He's one of those billionaires who's like, I don't think I ever want to die. So they're like swapping out blood with baby blood and and sitting, sleeping in Crazy hyperbaric stuff. chambers, like on some life extension. You know, like I was all excited to move to New Zealand just during the pandemic. I found out Peter Thiel was there. I was like, oh, I can't do that. I don't, I don't want to move closer to a vampire. And just one of those dudes who's like, made money off making money, was like an early investor in Facebook. And just like, if yeah. you looked why he's rich, you'd be like, I still don't understand. <laughs> like, so, but that guy bankrolled like uh, JD Vance from very early on, like put him in all the positions. Like basically like you ever seen the movie, the Manchurian candidate or I have. The, the, yes, this is the first time I think we've ever seen a candidate being Manchurian right before our very eyes. <laughs> Normally they do the Manchurian stuff behind closed doors. Cause they don't want you to see it. It's but this is the naked. first time. Yeah, he's he. You can still. He's not even on Wi-Fi or on a. He's not on Bluetooth. The plug is coming out of his back and into the wall. Like he's not even. They're not even being secretive about it. Like his, and that's why sometimes you can see his batteries run low. Like when he tried to order a donut, and he just flamed oh, out. Like he. <laughs> I mean, so, so for me, he just, you know, he just to me is a a waste of white skin. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh my Like God. you got, like that's all I'm trying to say. He's just a waste of white. You got all when that he, white skin you could do so much with and, <laughs> and you're not, you're not doing nothing with it. It's it, it. No, I will say this though. Like to that point, he do have all the pieces, but they don't come together. Right. Mm -mm. It's like when you build a Lego set and you got some Duplos in there. That's what he is. He is, <laughs> he is Legos plus Duplos equal a mess. He, <laughs> to your point, when he tried to order those, when he tried to order those donuts, I was like, I was like, hey man, like, do you not talk to human beings? <laughs> When's the last, you, when you can't do donuts, you know what I mean? You can't do donuts. And here's the thing that is amazing. First of all, the thing I loved about that clip, which made me want to write about it, it was like, because as somebody who works in, in documentaries and reality television, I'm like, oh, your team hates you. Oh, that's what the problem is here. Your entire you team it. hates you. And, but, and, like, but, 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 and, and, and actually, real talk, break that part down, because you talked about that. And I do think it's important because I, I read it and laughed at first, but now I put it together. It's like, wait, no, he, United Shades of America, no, he knows what. So, like, what, what was your, what was well, your signal was, for that? The, fir the first thing, well, the first thing was when I watched it, I was like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, wait a minute. And I started to feel bad for J.D. Vance. That, like, oh, you don't know your team hates you. <laughs> that, because here's how it works. Because so what it is, it looks very simple. J.D. Vance walks into a donut shop, chats the people up, and orders some donuts. That's a very, it seems like a thing where you'd be like, just go do it. Mm -hmm. But. That only works if you have the skills to do that, and J.D. Vance doesn't have the skills to do that, and his whole team knows it. That ain't the first time they've seen him try to talk to humans before, so they know it. So what they what you're supposed to do, because think about all these people you see on TV as hosts. There's teams of people around them to make it all work. You see Bourdain on TV. There's 15 people on the other side of the camera just making sure Bourdain was in the best position to succeed. Same with me. And, and every host is good at some things and not good at others. So they mm -hmm. should be like, Okay, we got this donut thing. Now, we all know, if this is a good team, if they're a good team, we all know he sucks at talking to humans, and he's real awkward around donuts for some reason. We don't know why. Maybe he was touched by a donut when he was a kid. So we need to put him in the position to succeed. And what you do is, before J.D. Vance gets there, the team goes in and goes, who here wants to talk to vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance? And if they go, none of us, <laughs> then you go, I think we're going to have to find another donut shop. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't just walk into a random donut shop. You go, who in here is excited to talk to J.D. Vance? None of us. And then a black woman goes, and I don't even want to be on camera. Okay, we got to find another. We got to find a Chick-fil-A or a Dunkin' because this ain't this ain't working out. When he, and when, so that was clearly what it was. W, when he said, when he said, I'm running for vice president, and that black girl said, Okay. Okay. That's it. <laughs> and that's I think I threw, my, I threw my phone across. I said, yo. Yeah. Why would you? I, my thing was, I was like, all right. So to your point, not setting them up for success is one thing. But then why did y'all record? Y'all recorded that, looked at it, yeah. and said, we're going to yeah. press, press send on that. No, that's when you're, as soon as she says, okay, 
and you see his eyes like like he feels like oh no. he's starting to do that panic it's like a little kid who suddenly like gets anxiety he suddenly becomes the little kid who he's becomes a kid and you just and that's when a, one of your people goes cut stop turn that off delete that we're going somewhere else you don't that footage never sees the light of day and then when he i mean it's funny because even my nine-year-old i showed it to her and then that donut order was really like Oh, you just landed on this planet, and you just you just you you Wikipedia donuts, and you because you didn't you couldn't even pull off like because he he first he goes uh give me uh, a lot of glazed and he just sort of does this weird arm a lot of glazed and then he, and then some sprinkle stuff some sprinkle stuff what are you <laughs> I said I was like and then he said. He said, he, then he said, oh, what are the things that y'all don't even like? Like, let's put that in a bag for the people. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And then he, and then he says some cinnamon rolls, which first of all, that's not even the, that's not donuts anymore, man. That's a different, those cost more. You can't get a dozen cinnamon rolls for the price of a dozen donuts. And then he just closed it on. This is my nine year old's favorite part. Whatever makes sense. Like you could see him just like. Shut his, down. Yeah, he just. Like you, didn't, you could see that he just powered down. Like he, he had pulled his own plug out of the wall and he didn't have it. He didn't have it. Whatever makes sense. And it's just like, if you, and, but here's the funny part. So it just, so like I said, you need to fire your whole team. You need to start over because none of that. And you need to, and your team should be like, okay, JD, we're going to go order donuts. Here's things you say when you order donuts. I'd like a dozen. Give me your best sellers. What are your favorites? <laughs> you know, like, and I'd put it like, just, just, just scrape up all the sprinkles and throw them in a box. You know, things like, and I was like, if you believe that one, JD, then you really have a big problem. <laughs> but then you see him talking about why women who don't have kids are not good people. And that dude is freestyling and flowing. That dude he, is he's like, in the he, zone. He's in the zone. He's, he's Jordan he's, 96 when he's talking about women being less valuable. <laughs> Is it? There is no stutter. There is no ums. Then when that dude gets in his, he gets in his women, Steph child, Curry. his cat woman bag. He is Steph Curry. Steph Curry in, in the Olympics in the last in the, two minutes of the Olympics from he is, half court. He is cooking you. He's, it's like, he's doing that thing where he shoots and just runs up. Turn around. Look. I, I ain't got to look. I ain't got to look. <laughs> it's in I, his I was, bag. I'm like, I'm like, yo, like, man, you're like a a a bad person and a dumb person at the yeah. same time. <laughs> but he's and, a and, rich person. So he's a rich person. Know, yeah. So look, 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 we got you for a good time, not a long time. I've got to talk to you about his run and make too. Okay. So, <laughs> so Trump, yeah. Trump is out here. Now, here's my thing. Here's my thing about Donald Trump. And like, I get frustrated with uh, political media, living corporate. We're really talking about like the world of like work and like lived experience and more real talk in the corporate world. But political media gets on my nerves because we laugh. They laugh a lot at Trump. Mm-hmm. Without really acknowledging like his the danger of what he says, they kind of treat him like he's like a clown, and he is a clown, yeah. but he's a clown who has the potential to create actual harms. And we saw that during his first administration with all those judge appointments, not in, not uh, not excluding the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he says crazy things, w like damn near every day. And I'm trying to figure out is it that we're just numb? We being like the like the public yeah. consciousness numb to it because I feel like if Kamala got up there and said something about if she pivoted from like bacon to wind the farms sharks. to sharks, sharks. <laughs> her campaign would be over. Like, what do you It'd think that's over. about? Be, well, it's, you are, you already named it. It's about white male privilege. It's about white men and rich white male privilege because we believe if you're rich, then you're smart. And that's what Elon Musk surfs on. Like, you're rich, so you must... It's so funny to me. You can be smart in one area that made you money, but that doesn't mean you know about everything. But we have this whole thing about, like, well, you're rich and smart, so you must know everything, you know, uh, which is not true. And the thing is, I think we have to think of Trump as, like, a baby with a shotgun. It may be funny and cute, but it, it could actually hurt some things. You know what I mean? And so, and I also think you have to realize, and I have to remember this all the time, most people in this country ain't paying that close attention to politics. Like me and you and all of us on Twitter are like going through everything and we've read all the articles and we're and we're Googling things to find out what percentage of judges. The da, 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 da. Most people, it is just the thing that goes past their face every now and again. They go, Man, Trump is ridiculous. And they don't know about the judge stuff. They don't know about the the uh, they don't January 6th happened, but they haven't thought about it since. You know what I mean? And it's easy for people for you sort of go, yeah, why did they put those people in jail on January 6th? All they did was have a rally. It's easy to sort of start to think that because you're not paying that close attention. And so I think it becomes our job to have patience with those people. And when you run across them to go, uh, you know, 
And so I think that like, no, that's not what's happening. I think it's just the idea that like we live in a time because there's so much media and we get convinced that everybody's watching the media we're watching. And most people are watching people dance on TikTok. You know what I mean? And I'm not mad at that, but that's most people are not watching the same level of media that you and I are, which is why it becomes so important to you think about it. Most of the eligible voters aren't registered to vote. Right. And that's so that's what tells you right there. Most people aren't paying attention, which is why the thing I do at this time of year is just like, I just want to get you registered. Like, I just want to get you. Amen. I just want to get you thinking about it a different way. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote. I just want to get you in that booth. And the more you get in that booth, the more used to it'll be. But I think that, like, we have to understand that, like, for most people, Trump is just that guy who has clips on the news or online every now and again. They don't go deeper than that. And so that's why it becomes important for Kamala to motivate the people who are like, I really want to vote and I would be happy to vote for you. But you need to do the things I need you to do that are also the right the the right things to do, the correct things to do. Look, man, um, I feel like all of us, but I would think you more notably, you have to keep some semblance of hope, right? Like people look to mm-hmm. you, to your point earlier about, hey, pilot, don't take off. Stay where you're at. I got to get these tweets off. <laughs> I got to get, let me get five tweets off, pilot. Pa- and then we stop. can go to DC. Right. I am. I I'm very, to talk I'm about. very important for very a very small percentage of people. <laughs> you, you wait. And everybody yeah, is. Yeah. Um, is like, you have, there has, you have to keep hope. So like, what are you mm-hmm. keeping hope about this season? And then, like, what are you laughing at? Like, I also feel like comedians, they do a good job of laughing at stuff early that everybody might not find funny. But, like, I imagine, and if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Like, what is it that you are just, what, like, what, what, are, you, what are you keeping front of mind for you just to kind of keep you going? Well, I mean, again, I think that, like, it becomes real easy to, to uh, figure out figure out ways to find hope when you have three kids or you have any kids. Yeah. I'm not saying that you have to have children. I'm saying that is what, one of the things that probably keeps me out of the pit of despair is that I, is that I have these three kids who know who Trump is and know who Kamala is and know that we should blah, blah, blah. But like, like sitting with my two older daughters watching the convention, I can be super cynical about what's happening on that stage and also super hopeful about what it means for my kids. So for me, there's like this real sense of like, like this weekend, I did stand up doing stand up again and it's at a little tiny theater in Berkeley. It holds 60 people. We do two shows a night, four 30 and seven 30. Cause that's the age group I'm in now. <laughs> like, not, not seven 30 and nine 30. That's too late. Four 30 and seven 30. And I was, I realized that like, cause I did the run before and it was kind of hard to do. And I realized I need to involve my kids in this more. So the way in which that I find hope and find is to make things is to add joy to things that I'm already doing. So for example, the first show this weekend, my nine-year-old sat in a tech booth and throughout the stand-up show, I would just talk to her and ask her questions and the audience really enjoyed. So that it's not about your enjoyment. It's about me and my nine-year-old having our own experience. The second show, my daughter who sings and plays guitar opened the show and sang and played guitar for the first time in front of a group of people who aren't her friends. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Her, or, or her school. And so for me, it's like, by the time I step on stage, I'm like, I don't care what you are. got your money's worth. I don't, you know, I am trying to figure out ways to create more joy for myself so that I will have the energy to then do all this other stuff, to do this work. So, and then it's really helpful to like, like that J.D. Vance thing wasn't a thing I wanted to write. It like said, you sit down, come on, you need to write this. So for me, leaning into those moments of inspiration, when it'd be easy to be like, I don't know, what am I doing this for? Nobody, it, it doesn't matter, which it doesn't, but really feeding my own inspiration and doing that stuff really helps me like sort of like lighten my spirit and not just get caught up in the, this guy's actually awful. <laughs> he's actually just really, you know, <laughs> and thinking that maybe he's going to read it and it's going to hurt his feelings really gives me hope. Look, man, we're going to get you out of here before we do though. Look, you got a ton of stuff going on, right? Um, and by the way, congrats on hosting uh, the documentary Emmys later this month. So salute yeah. to you. Can you share more about projects and the things you're excited about getting into? I, again, I know that you, I know you're also doing, you're getting back into stand up. You have your shows, anything yeah. else? I mean, right now, I'm, a lot of this sort of inspiration and writing is going to my sub stack. It's called who's with me with mm-hmm. W. Kamal Bell asks who's with me. And I weekly, I have to actually write one today. I write about, I'll probably write about JD Vance. Actually, <laughs> like I write about the things that are sort of b- bouncing around in my head that I don't have any other space for. And, uh, and so, yeah, so, uh, we, uh, so G- please check me out on sub stack. It's free. 
But if you want to throw me five dollars a month, we do Zooms every month where you can sit and talk to me like this, where people can they don't have to book me on their podcast. They can just pay five, for five dollars for the price of a cup of coffee. You can talk to me on a Zoom. I, and that's, then that's good value. I can't. I'm about to start hosting the ACLU's podcast uh, at Liberty, and so we're going to record some of those. And so that'll be. I haven't been doing. I haven't been in podcasting for a while, so I'm starting to host the ACLU. So check out. Be on the lookout for me to be the new host of at, at Liberty for my friends at the ACLU. Look, it's been W. Kamal Bell. We had him for a great time, brother. Thank you. I give you flowers off mic. I'm going to say right now, again, plenty of people, the PR agencies come to me. Hey, we got this person. They got this book. They got this movie. Can you, can they come on? I'm like, sure. Then off mic, I'll be like, hey, come back. I'll be like, sure. And I never hear from him again. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Until the next thing comes up. So yo. Until the next movie. Oh, I'm so excited to finally talk to you again because I want to promote. Yeah, come yeah, on, brother. Yeah, yeah come on. So yeah. W, man, thank you. God bless. Uh, thank you. We'll catch you soon, man. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to do it. And I'll come back again. Listen, man, don't threaten me no dog on good time because I got some jokes that I didn't try. And okay, I told my right. friends, yeah, so okay. I, I, I tagged you in one earlier and I, you didn't give me feedback, but I'll, I'll send you I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I've been working today. I'm definitely going to check it out. All right. All right, brother. We'll talk soon. Peace. Right. Bye. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.